Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our workshop series, our winter workshop series. So this is the third in the winter workshop series that we're performing today. And today we're gonna to be changing out the wash valves, purge valves, flush valves or solenoid valves. They're all called the same thing. They're all, they're all the exactly same thing, but they use different names. They're called solenoid valves in some manuals. They're called flush valves, purge valves or wash valves. So what the purge valves do is they purge the unwanted fuel emissions vapor from the fuel evap system and from the fuel system, they purge it instead of purging it outside to the atmosphere, which is not, not good, of course, with regards to emissions control, etc. It purges it out into the actual back into the engine so it's burnt cleanly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put down some cloths. Now, these cloths will catch any parts that may fall from dismantling the assemblies. We don't want that falling down into the bottom of the engine compartment because we haven't got the bottom panels off the car and therefore that would necessitate us then having to do a load of extra work taking off those bottom panels. So to mitigate all that hassle, we put some rags down here, nice and simple to do, and it will catch any rubbish or any bits and pieces, any clips, etc., that may fall from here. Obviously, we're going to be careful, make sure we don't drop them, but just in case. Always do preventative maintenance, guys. Always do preventative work and try and think what may happen going forwards. Years and years of doing my own maintenance on cars has taught me to do things like this. To get access to the, to the purge valves, you can unclip them. They're held onto a bracket. There's a central bracket here, and that central bracket um, holds the purge valves. The purge valves are clipped to them, and also it holds what's called the fuel vapor separator. So to gain access and to make it easy to gain access to these purge valves, we're gonna remove or lift off the fuel vapor the fuel vapor separator, which is this unit. It's just held on by these two Allen keys. I've loosened them already. And so I'm just gonna finally remove those. And it just provides, makes it a bit easier to gain access to the purge valves. We don't wanna make the job hard for ourselves, do we? Gotta make sure, again, we don't drop. Even though I've got my cloths down, I don't want to drop any tools down there or any Allen key heads. Lift everything off carefully, supporting it with your hands. When you take these screws out or these Allen keys, they're actually torque heads. I should call them by their proper name, torque head screws, as you can see there. The blue paint, by the way, is where they were initially put in. It's to show that they haven't loosened to a mechanic when they gain access to these parts. Now, literally, this is just loosely mounted on there, so it's just bolted to the bracket. Remember, these pipes are part of the EVAP system, so go careful, don't go ramming them out of the way. Just move them so you can provide access to them. You can see here, you can see here how the purge valves are held onto this bracket. So you've got a stem of metal coming away from the bracket, um, which is located there, and another one here. So this is all attached to the same bracket assembly that the vapor separator was attached to. So you have to unclip them, by taking off this end little clip here and this little end clip here. We'll take off this one first, ease it off, and then this is rubber mounted. So it's rubber mounted on there because these make a nasty clicking sound when they've been worn after a while, which is why we're replacing them. And that nasty clicking sound is alleviated partly by having a rubber mount. And obviously that rubber mount fatigues over time as well and hardens up, which accentuates the clicking as well. So replacing these purge valves means that not only are we going to get rid of the nasty clicking sound, but we're also going to re uh, replace in the cushioning rubber section as well, which will alleviate the sound that these purge valves make. Now these purge valves will start making a sound again in the future. It's well known on 458s. It's just they make a clicking sound as they're working their valve at the end of the day. So they will make a clicking sound going forwards. They will be very quiet to begin with when I put the new ones in, but later on they will start making a sound again. That doesn't mean they're failing. I'm just replacing them as a matter of course because they're, because they're a little bit noisy and it's very easy to replace them. In a, on a 458 Spider, once we've got all this engine cover off, we've done the spark plugs, you might as well replace the purge valves at the same time. The purge valves cost around 80 pounds, including the clips, including what's called these ear, where are they? These ear bracket clips. So those were only about 40p each from Marinello parts. So proper, obviously it's all OEM parts that I've purchased. And these two purge valves together, um, including the clips for about 80 pounds. And this is what they look like. They're a Bosch item, unsurprisingly. So we've got an Italian car. They came in a Ferrari, nice Ferrari Italian box, 
but they're a German part. But I'd rather have it as a German part, to be, to be honest. I'd rather have it Bosch because Bosch is very reliable. Hence why I've got a Bosch battery in the car now. So yeah, this is a purge valve and the cushioning part that I was talking to you about is there. So it goes onto the metal bracket stem through that bit of um, cushioning. If you like, it's, it's, it's almost like a shock absorber. It absorbs the shock of these purge valves clicking with the valve mechanism um, clicking all the time. So it helps to absorb that sound a little bit and it helps also to retain the purge valve on that bracket without it slipping. First of all, I'm going to be removing this end clip. This end clip retains the purge valve on the bracket. So you've got to remove that first of all so you can slide the purge valve off the bracket. And there we have it. So that's just an end clip that is a retainer on there to retain the purge valve onto that end bracket, but it's retained on there by the shock absorber rubber system anyway, because it's a, a very tight interference fit. So that's the left-hand side. We'll do these purge valves one at a time. So first of all, I've got to remove the purge valve off the bracket. It should be quite a tight interference fit. With all the pipe, with all the pipe work that's on the purge bracket, it makes it quite a tight fit in here. So I'm just going to move away from this section. There we go. To give me better access to it, as you can see. So the first stage, now we've removed the purge valve from the bracket, is to disconnect the wiring. So the first thing I've done is I've disconnected the earth on the battery. That's just a fail safe. These cars are full of electronic ECUs. The last thing you want to do is short out one of those ECUs. Not that you're likely to do that, but whenever you're touching any wiring, it's just my recommendation is to disconnect the battery. I've actually already disconnected this connector, but to show you the easy approach to, to um, disconnect this connector, what you need to do is you're supposed to push on this part here, because there's a tab on the purge valve, which I'll show you on this new purge valve. So that tab is where the connector locates. So you've got a lift You've got to press down on the section that I'm going to show you, which will lift the back end off that connector, off that connecting part, off that tab, so you can remove the wiring connector. But it's quite stiff. So if you're pushing down on that, it's quite stiff to do that. So what I found easier to do was to just look down that part, see where the bit of plastic for this connector is located over that tab, and just tease it off gently with a little screwdriver. So I use this little screwdriver just down here like so. And you'll see in there, the bit that I teased up. It does actually push up when you use the back tab, but it just didn't push it up easy enough and I didn't want to break the connector, so I wasn't gonna force it. So I just gave it a little bit of a hand with a small little flat blade screwdriver. So now we've got the wiring connector off, we need to remove the breather pipe work at the back here, which is just a case of pushing in the white tabs on here, which disforms or deforms, whichever way you look at it, the, the retainer here, which is the white bracket part, it deforms that, as you can see there, so you can remove it from the retaining part of the purge valve, which is that lip. And now we've got, what we've got to do is remove one of these ear brackets. These are called ear brackets. They're also given various different other names as well. Um, and you have to have new clamps, so new ear bracket clamps and new ear and a pair of ear bracket pliers as well, which I've got, which enable you to fix these properly. Now, some people might say, well, just replace them with Jubilee clips, the ones that you screw up or, or use a, a spanner to tighten them up, it's a lot easier. They're not as professional as these. When I say they're not as professional, they're not as good quality. These will not move, and once they're tightened up properly, they will stay there forever. They're not gonna fall off, they're not gonna come loose. They are the professional item, that's why Ferrari use them. 
If you put a Jubilee clip on there, Jubilee clips can fail. They can come loose. You certainly don't want that happen with an evaporative system. So you want to make sure you use the proper ear bracket clamps to make sure that you put the pipe back on properly. Now what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to use that cutting section on the, on the ear bracket pliers. You're supposed to use that cutting section to cut the clamp off, to cut this top part off. But that means you're gonna have bits of metal flying all over the place and it's not such a good way of doing it. A better, more refined way of doing it is to tease off the retaining clip on as part of the bracket and then unravel the bracket. You can't reuse these brackets again anyway, so um, it's not like you're trying to look after the brackets. You've just got to make sure you don't damage the other part and you don't have bits of metal flying off all over the place. So if you look here, this is where it's retained. It, it clips through onto a nodule. So I'm just going to lift it off that nodule and then it should unwrap. So there we go. That's, I'm sure you'll agree, that's a lot better way and a lot easier way of removing them rather than cutting off bits of metal and having the bits of metal flying all over the engine compartment. Now all we've got to do is just pull off this pipe. It's been on there quite tight, so it may need a bit of teasing off, but just pull off this pipe and then we can put the new purge valve on. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give the video a thumbs up, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. Now because this pipe, was clamped on there with these ear clamps. It was on there, what we used to say back in the day as murder tight. That meant, and because remember, these purge valves are the original purge valves that were installed with this car when this car was made, when his engine was put together. So they've been on there since 2015. So these, this, this is rubber, this is plastic. So it's just not solidified, but it's become quite a bit attached to the plastic. So rather than wrenching it around and trying to force it, what I did was just put a screwdriver down the back. Obviously I've already teased it out a part way now, but just put a screwdriver down the back, just gently, gently teased it out each way, all the way around until it finally gave and then released itself. And now it will just pull off nice and easily. That way you don't damage the rubber, you don't incur more headaches from just being a bit too boisterous. You've just got to be careful. Whenever you're doing these sort of jobs on these cars, especially high value cars, just make sure you have a bit of empathy for engineering. So you don't ram things and trying to force things off, etc. Just be gentle, teasing it off. Um, this is a fine tuned engine. This is a fine tuned mechanical item. You don't want to be going in there too boisterous. Just have a bit of empathy for engineering. Just be gentle when you when you work on these cars you don't have to wrench everything around you know so now we can put the new purge valve on so it's just a case of a reversal of the removal procedure really but make sure you put the new bracket on the pipe first of all because that would be a pain in the ass if you <laughs> had to put the pipe on then you had to take it off again but it's quite a loose fit anyway so new push the pipe on then you've got the new ear clamp bracket now with regards to this ear clamp bracket, I've put it on to a way exactly how it was when I took it off so that this retainer section, if you want to call it that, is on the same side. So as when somebody removes it or when maybe I remove it in the future, if I keep the car, if I need to change these valves again in the future, I just pull it off the pipe and I've got it accessed there again so I can quite easily unclip the old bracket as I did just now. It's just belt and braces doing it the same. And because we've got the original ear clamp on there, might as well just put it in line with that one and tighten it up in the same way. These are the high-end Knipix ear clamp pliers. In effect, they have the ability to clamp on the front and cut on the front or clamp on the side. There's a cheaper version of these which only provide clamping on the front. These are a lot better. They're obviously twice as expensive, but they're a lot better. And these last forever. These will last the life of me for sure. So just buy one pair and get it done. You know, you're gonna, I'm gonna be using quite a few of these brackets in the future, I'm sure. Now with regards to this side, so you can see it better, I'm gonna use the side clamping approach. So all you do, just lift up the bracket, get the pliers around the ear of the bracket, like so. Make sure you've got the bracket in the place that you want it. And then 
just tighten it up. So now it's just a case of putting the connector back on, putting the breather back on here. So it's just a you know the reversal of the removal procedure. So you just literally push that in, tease just to help it back on, it just slips back on very easily. And then the connector, this you've got to make sure this is around the right way, otherwise the connector won't go back on. So like so. There you will have heard a click. That was the bit of plastic inside on the on the clamp retaining back on the clip on the solenoid valve. So that is now all connected back up and I just need to now slide it back onto the bracket and then put the end clip back on. Now the reason the original purge valve came off the bracket so easily was because the cushioning bit of rubber, rubber absorption material stayed on the bracket. So this slid off the rubber material because that was the easier thing for it to do. So make sure that you take off that rubber section as well, which locates the purge valve, as you can see here, over these little ears on the bracket. So make sure you remove the old one before you put the new one on. You've got these little ears here on this bracket, which the rubber shock absorber goes over these little ear parts. So make sure you've removed the old one because it was still on there for mine. So I've just removed that. And again, you just get a screwdriver underneath it and tease it off because it's been on there since the car was made. So it's going to have been on there quite a while. So it's going to be a bit stiff. Now the new one will be quite stiff to put on because you've got to try and get that rubber part over that bracket assembly over those ears. So as you'd expect, this is quite tight to get on the bracket. Remember, it's a new part, so it's got a new rubber ab absorption section, a new rubber shock absorber section. So it's very tight to get on the bracket, but that's as you'd expect, because obviously you don't want it coming loose. So it's near as damn it on there. Now I'm just gonna push it on the rest of the way. There we go. It's now gone over the ears of the bracket section, of that end bracket section, and it's located in the dip. And it's just a case of putting the little bracket back on. I'm almost surprised they never supplied a new one of these little clips. So it's just a case, when I say bracket, I mean the clip. It's just a case of putting this clip back on at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the bracket section. I'm very surprised they didn't provide a new clip, to be honest, but they're quite tight anyway. To make it easier to put the end clip on that retains the purge valve on the bracket, I removed the breather pipe because the breather pipe was so easy to get on and off and it was obstructing access. So I just quickly removed that and I can just quickly pop that back on again without any problems. Like so. So it just made it easier to gain access to put the clip on because they didn't want to damage this pipe. Now, it's just a case of doing the other one exactly the same. So I'm sure you don't need to see all of that. So we'll skip to where we're reconnecting the fuel vapor separator and then putting the actual engine cover back on again. So now with both new purge valves on, new ear clamps on, and all nice and tight and secure on there, I can now put back the fuel vapor separator. And that's just a couple of Torx bolts and just retain it back on again. And just make sure that you're sighting it back in. You can see the holes when you look down the top to where it was previously located. And you'll feel it sit because it, it retains, there's, there's little slots underneath and you'll feel it slits like these. It sits on the actual bracket part where it won't move. And so you'll know that those are the correct positions for these bolts. You can just put them back in again. Reversal of the remo removal procedure. Just nip them. Again, be careful that you don't drop any tools into the engine compartment. So there we're just nipping them back up again, not too tight. And I've realigned them back up with the blue marks anyway. So those were obviously the right torque. I know it's a bit of a an ad hoc way of doing it, but there you go. 
So that's the purge valves. It's taken me twice as long to do it because of narrating to you. But as you can see, it's quite a simple job. It's not that tough to do, guys. So purge valves aren't that hard to do. Save yourself the hassle and the cost and replace them yourself. They're only about 80 quid for the two, two new purge valves and the new um, ear clamp brackets and uh, not too difficult to do at all. Nice and simple. So we've just started the engine up. It's got the new purge valves in there and it's noticeably quieter. You haven't got that clicking anymore because the purge valves are new and they just don't make that clicking when they're new. So the engine compartment is a lot quieter. So all you can hear is the normal engine compartment and of course the exhaust of the 458. So it's a lot quieter. Now you'll hear the engine hunting a bit because I disconnected the battery. Obviously I was reconnecting the battery and it does this while it's re-establishing the direct fuel injection electronic management metrics and the values in effect because they've all been wiped clean from the ECUs. So it's re-establishing the correct values for the direct fuel injection system. And, and that's to be expected. So you have to leave it running for five to 10 minutes you're supposed to. Uh, while it re-establishes the correct metrics into the ECUs, which is what I'm going to do. Then I'll put the engine lid back on again and then we'll be done. The, all the engine compartment work will be finished. So we're now ready to put the engine cover back on. What I should say first of all is that I've gone round for 10 minutes just checking, absolutely checking to make sure all the wiring is right. I've just made sure all these clamps are tight, all the cabling's routed correctly, nothing's under any duress, nothing's under any strain. Obviously the new purge valves just made doubly sure that they're all fitted correctly, that there's no problems whatsoever. Everything is absolutely fine. The engine compartment is in a lot better condition than it was when I took the engine lid off to begin with. As you saw, it was disgracefully dirty, as you'd expect, because that engine cover hadn't come off since the car had been built. Or if it had, nobody had bothered cleaning it. And the little things like these connectors, they're held on on very slight little clamps here. So you're gonna make sure that they're pushed back in and that they're retained just in case anything had become dislodged. So just a double, triple check. And now we're ready to put the engine cover back on again and say goodnight to the 458 Spider engine because this isn't gonna see the light of day probably for a few years now until the spark plugs need replacing again. Whether or not that's under my care or not, I don't know. Maybe I won't be the, pe Maybe I won't be the caretaker of this car when the spark plugs need doing again in the future. But if it is, then I will do the spark plugs again in about three years time. So back on with the engine cover. Now in putting the engine cover back on, this is quite light. We've got to get underneath this carpet section and we've got to be very careful that we make sure that these brackets are forward because these brackets lap over on top of the engine cover and they retain the cables here, the hydraulic cables for the roof mechanism. And this cable here, which is also for the roof mechanism, we need to make sure that this cable is located properly within this, this slot and make sure then that we've got the grommets back in properly um, and it's all located properly. And then these brackets here as well are lapped underneath and they go over on top of the engine cover when we've got the engine cover back in place. Momentous occasion, engine cover back on. I'm sure it's not going to go in dead easy to begin with because it will take a little bit of leveraging with the carpet and such like. My son's just giving me a bit of a hand here. Double task as the, as the cameraman as well. Now the key thing here is to get these cables back on properly. Remember, it was a bit of a stretch before. So we've got the engine lid back on now, obviously not bolted down. We're just gonna do a double check just to make sure everything is being located properly before we put the grommets in on the cables. We can see here where the overspray is and where the bolts were previously. So we'll match the bolts up with the overspray, as you can see here. So we can see where we need to align the bolts up with. And that all looks good. We'll have this clamp to back down. This will bolt through here and then we'll put the weather strip back on here at the back so that it seals properly when the tunnel cover is down, when the roof is closed. Everything all looks good. I've already put the grommet on the other side. So we're just putting the final grommet back in on this side for this cable to make sure you don't push the grommet all the way through. Just the one edge. There we go. Okay, so bolting that back down again and then bolting the carpet section back on top of the engine cover. Then we're done.
Now, important part to remember is when you're putting these bolts back in, make sure that you're putting these cable clamps back in in the right place. These cable clamps need to be actioned, need to be positioned in the, in the correct place on the bolts where they were before, but you need to make sure that the, the spacers are, not the spacers, sorry, the washers are underneath the bracket. Now, when you look at these brackets, there's actually a metal section in the middle so they won't deform. So these bracket sections go on top of the washers. You put the washers underneath, that's very important to remember. And I remembered that because I looked at the pictures I took beforehand to make sure I was putting it back exactly how it should be. Because there's been quite a few weeks since I took this engine lid off and it's important to make sure that you obviously your memory you're not going to remember those sort of intricate little parts so photographs are always very useful now we're putting the carpet on top of the engine cover the engine cover is all securely bolted down i've triple checked to make sure it's bolted down properly you don't have to put the bolts murder tight on the engine cover it just has to be pretty tight so we've put the carpet down temporarily we've got to put the row the locating plastic screw push studs on there yet but now we're putting the weather strip back on again so what you need to do is locate one end first of all make sure it's butted right up and pressed right down and then slowly take it round this is a thick section because of where this grommet goes through and you've got mat padding behind it so you have to stretch it and make sure it goes over the back properly without damaging the weather strip and then just slowly and gently ease it along until you get it located around the section at the back and you see here it overlaps onto this part and that bit fits in to there so you just locate that in and push it down then what I always do with these weather strips is just go around and bang down make sure it's all located properly now the last stage finally is putting on the plastic retaining studs which hold the carpet on and these are literally you can screw them on to get them going, but literally they're pretty much a press fit. And they locate the carpet edges. So I've gone through, put these plastic retaining studs on for the carpet. I've just gone doubly around again, just to make sure they're seated well down because these back ones weren't seated properly, but I've just tapped them a little bit more firmly down to make sure they were seated. It's very important to make sure that these, this engine cover is located properly and that these plastic retaining studs for the carpet are fully down as well. Why? Well, because this roof is gonna fold back in here. If these studs are protruding too much, then it could damage the roof. So you wanna make sure this is doubly right before you even think about closing the tunnel cover and, and opening and closing the roof mechanism. But it's all fine now, so we'll go ahead and close the roof. So that's it, we're done. Purge valve's complete. That is definitely quieter. The purge valve's being replaced has definitely got rid of that ticking sound. There was a ticking sound, a constant ticking sound from those purge valves. That noise is now gone. Purge valve's replaced to sort of that problem. And that ticking will come back later on because the purge valves will start wearing with mileage, but it'll be gone probably for my duration of ownership of the car.